والسلام على رسول الله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم الهمنا مراشد امورنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا This is a small mudakkara that will be made regarding few of the gifts that Almighty Allah has blessed the people of the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It is the favor of Almighty Allah that He has given us certain lands, He has given us certain personalities, He has given us certain things of power which nobody else around us enjoys. One problem, however, does come is when we ourselves lose connection. or we lose understanding of the power that we have then our eyes start wandering towards other powers at the present moment in the world there is a big movement towards what is known as feel the power whether you meet certain people who can explain to you how to meditate and in their meditation they can take you on to different journeys they can take you on to a journey of finding inner peace of removing sicknesses within you of removing hate of removing malice but whatever journey that they can take you on in the end of the day that power that they are introducing to you to is nothing compared to the power that you have already been given the problem is sometimes me and you we have forgotten our own power rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam speaking of one of these powers which is called the quran He said that person who Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given him the knowledge of Quran, allowed him to learn Quran, and thereafter his eye wanders over to any other person, then he has really been the most nashukar. He has made the most ingratitude to Almighty Allah for the gift of Quran. A great scholar of his time, Allama Yusuf Ludiani, rahimullah, he used to say that Almighty Allah blessed the people of this Ummah with gifts which were not given to anyone before. He would mention three, and then in this explanation, we will explain a fourth that we have been given. The three that he mentioned is: He said, "Allah Taala gave us the Baytullah, the house of Almighty Allah. It was never the qibla of the people of the past, although throughout history it had and it contained within itself divine power, which we will explain." He says, "But it was made as a qibla for the people of this ummah." People of the past would make Hajj towards it, but in Salah they would not face it. It was the honor of the people of this Ummah that besides the Hajj and the Umrah, every day when we face in Salah we facing the Kaaba. The Qibla is the direction of the Kaaba. Every day again we make a connection with this power source, which is a source for the entire world. The second gift Allah Taala gave us. It's called the Kalam Allah. It is the uncreated speech of Almighty Allah. The third is Rasul Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Each one of this Allah Taala allowed us to have such a connection with it. The Quran Allah Taala allowed us to touch it, to see it, to read it, to take it within our hearts. As for the Baytullah, the Kaaba, Almighty Allah allowed us to face towards it, to journey towards it, to look at it, to touch it. For the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Almighty Allah allowed us to establish a connection through what is called salawat al Nabi Dhurud, to what is called making a journey for ziyarat al Nabi in Medina Munawwara, to stand in front of the Roba, to sit in the Masjid in any spot and to recite salawat. to be given the honor while we in the masjid where rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever will send salawat upon me from far almighty allah has established angels who will bring their salawat to me immediately and i will receive it it will be said to me so and so the daughter the son of so and so and i will reply with a dua the unique connection of every minute being able to have our name mentioned in that roba and then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and as for the person who in the haram sends salawat upon me you can be anywhere in the haram 
It has nothing to do with a loud voice or a soft voice. This connection doesn't go with what is called the tone which the world understands. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, That person who is in the haram and he sends salawat upon me, I will hear it directly. The honor for my voice to be allowed to penetrate into the roba without any wasta of an angel also, that honor has been given to the people of this ummah. Ulama have mentioned that a person who is in the haram sending salawat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he must have conviction that his salawat is being heard, it is being received, a dua is being given in reply. He must have conviction that he is at that moment under the special gaze of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That honor was given. The honor of Baytullah, the honor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the honor of Kalamullah. And one more we will speak about which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given to the people of the past. But it came to us in a manner that it never reached them also. And that is known as Masjid al-Aqsa. Three of these are known as the three holy lands. Medina Munawwara, Makkah Mukarrama, Jerusalem Masjid al-Aqsa. And the fourth is the Kalamullah which you have to make no journey to, it has come to you. With these four lands of power, four areas of power, a believer can become the most powerful that exists in the world. Very fast going through what power this land has, how to channel this power, how to understand this power. Regarding the power that falls on Makkah Mukarrama, Hazrat Qari Muhammad Sayyab Sahib Rahimullah wrote a unique book which was known as maqamat e muqaddasa In this book in detail he went into what is Makkah Mukarrama, what happens around Makkah Mukarrama, and how a person channels his heart towards the Kaaba. In the book, Hazrat Qari Sahib Rahimullah has explained that about 2000 years before the area of the Kaaba was shown to any individual, or before even the area of the Kaaba came out, Almighty Allah had selected the spot, but the spot was not apparent. The world was made out of water, and on that spot which was chosen for the Kaaba, he explains for about 2,000 years, Almighty Allah started a waterfall. The waterfall of what? In the Arabic language we call it Tajalli. We might call it phase in Urdu. In English perhaps we can call it a waterfall of spiritual current. Whatever is in the waterfall, the waterfall of this world is known as water. So as that water comes down, it comes down with force and it comes down with a splash. Whatever lies under that water will get the benefits of whatever is falling. So whatever was coming in that tajalli, in that waterfall that fell on the Kaaba, Qarita Ibrahimullah has explained that the first that fell on it was called a tajalli of creation. It was known that the entire world was going to spread from the spot of the Kaaba. From the Kaaba, sand was going to spread out into the world, making the different continents. From that sand then which would spread out, man would be created. According to what your sand was, you would be you. According to the color of the sand would be your color. According to what the sand contained within it would be your disposition, your nature, your temperament. Some people would be hot in nature, some would be cold. Some would be cheeky in nature, some would be timid and mild. But all of that first fell onto the Kaabatullah. It was only water until Allah Taala decided land to come. The word Kaaba comes from the word Kiab. In Arabic, Kiab means your ankle. If you look at the shape of your ankle, you will see it is called a protruding bone. The Kaaba was known as the Kaaba because it was the first spot that protruded on land. Everything was water. A protruding spot took place. And thereafter land began spreading. This was the Kaaba. But after the first tajalli of what was known as creation, the ingredients for man, began another tajalli which has never stopped until today. It was known as the waterfall of the beauty of Almighty Allah. 
the azmat and the greatness of Almighty Allah. When we say, Subhanallah, O oh Allah, you are perfect. A waterfall of the perfection of Almighty Allah. When we say, Alhamdulillah, it means, O oh Allah, all praise is only to you. A waterfall of that beauty which demands us, Alhamdulillah. When man says, Allahu Akbar, he says, Glory be to Allah. A waterfall of the magnificence of Almighty Allah. Because there was a need for Almighty Allah to be introduced to mankind. Whereas in this world, Almighty Allah Himself does not come. So Almighty Allah presented for this world a mara. In the world where a physical connection between two parties is not possible. One is because of distance. You want to speak to your son, to your husband, but he is far away. If you cannot make the physical contact the world today has created, make a phone call. You can make a WhatsApp. Sometimes you can even see the person, but it's not him. If a person needs to send money to someone and the hand cannot reach his hand, then the world today has created what is known as an account. With the pressing of a few buttons, money can be transferred from the east to the west. When today the world has shown all of that. When a person wants to open up his gate, wants to make the motor start moving, it is one button on a remote. There is a lot of current that flows in the world. Today has only shown the current. It was not that the current was never there. When the tajalli fell on the Kaabatullah, it was made as a connection between man, the lover, and Almighty Allah, the beloved. Man, the slave, and Almighty Allah, the king. A connection for which man will be able to understand and feel the presence of his Allah. When that Kaaba was established for mankind, جَعَلَ اللَّهُ الْكَعْبَةَ الْبَيْتَ الْحَرَامَ قِيَامًا لِلنَّاسِ It was mentioned that this will be the reason for man standing in the world. Power will be derived from it. If there was no Kaaba, there was no power source. If you have no source of electricity, everything goes off in the world. When electricity stops coming, immediately you make a phone call. You make a phone call where? To the powerhouse. If there has been a disconnection somewhere, the powerhouse can still be there, but you're not getting the power. Then it means you have to find out which wire has been cut. Allah Tabarukala made the powerhouse which is known as the Kaaba. That the powerhouse itself will never go off. It will remain there until just before Qiyamah. However, before that time, there is a possibility that man's connection with the powerhouse gets cut. If that connection gets cut, the problem is on the way. The problem is between our house and the Kaaba. And then the need comes that we have to renew the connection. How will we understand this connection? The first is to make the journey. The Baitullah has been blessed with a lot of dua. And the people journeying towards the Baytullah has been blessed with a lot of dua. While I will go through these lands, make an intention. And that's the purpose of this bayan. Make an intention, O oh Allah, if I have never visited Makkah Mukarramah, if I have never stood in front of Rasulullah sallallahu in Medina Munawwara, if I have never visited Masjid Al-Aqsa, O oh Allah, I desire to go to these lands. Sometimes we look at the amount it will cost. Sometimes we look at the fear that you might get at the border with the Israelis. So I will introduce you to the du'as that have been given for the man who makes the journey. And the benefits that fall upon the man who makes this journey. Journeying to the Kaaba has been such a thrill. Kaaba Ahbar mentioned that there was a time in history when the Kaaba itself complained to Almighty Allah. The Kaaba itself complained. That, oh Allah, what a unique house I am, but the people visiting me are so few. At that time, Almighty Allah spoke to the Kaaba, that I will create a nation that will come one day. That person who gets the honor of visiting the Kaaba today, and not once and twice, but a desire to continuously go, he must understand that when Almighty Allah at the beginning of time spoke to the Kaaba, Almighty Allah was speaking about him. 
said, I will create people who will one day come. Rukkaan sujjadan. When they are far from you, they will always be found in salah, ruku and sajda. Five times salah a day is rukkaan sujjada. But their desire to be with you will be like the desire of a bird when it has to leave its nest and the baby in the nest. As it flies away for whatever need it has, its heart remains connected with you. I will create such a nation who will have this connection. If Allah Tawarukullah blesses me and you with this connection and have the honor that you are once upon a time spoken by Almighty Allah to the Kaaba, that you are described. Nabi Ibrahim wasalam, put up the Kaaba. He looked around the Kaaba. He wondered who will ever make this journey through mountains, through the heat, through the difficulty. He made a dua. He said, O oh Allah, I have put up your house in a land which has nothing, in which there is no plantation, in which there is no ease, in which there is no flowing waters for the world. Ibrahim made dua for the man walking to the Kaaba. He said, O oh Allah, make a group of the people, their heart inclined towards this house. That person who finds this inclination, may Allah make us among them. Understand you have been accepted in the dua of Ibrahim a.s. فَجْعَلْ أَفْئِدَةً مِنَ النَّاسِ تَحْوِي إِلَيْهِمْ Let a group of the people of the world incline towards this house. وَرْزُقْهُمْ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ And O oh Allah, after they start coming, it will be an expensive journey. It will be a difficult journey. O oh Allah, you grant them the fruits of this journey. لَعَلَّهُمْ يشكرون, So that they always remain thankful to you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, That person who continuously goes either for hajj or for umrah, Allah tabarakullah will ensure that poverty will never come in his life. The dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam was given to the man going to the Kaaba. What does he get when he comes to the Kaaba? Hazrat Qari Tayyab sahab explained, and it is something to understand, something to feel. Divine power is there. When you read the Quran, whether you feel the power or you don't, that power enters you. That power cleans you. Whether you know the meaning or you don't know the meaning, it enters the eye, it enters the ear, it enters the heart. Whoever reads Quran, his insight gets made. A man who looks at the Kaaba, a man who makes tawaf of the Kaaba, a man who holds the Kaaba, whether he feels it or he does not, whether he knows it or he does not, Rasulullah said, a man just sitting and looking at the Kaaba. Allah Tawarukala daily descends on the Kaaba, hundreds of his mercies, and that man who is just looking at the Kaaba, that mercy falls on him. The one who is making tawaf around the Kaaba, mercy falls on him. The one who is performing salah towards the Kaaba, mercy falls on him. That mercy is called tajalli. The demand of that tajalli was such as it hit the Kaaba to Allah, it would splash. Because of that splash, it created a haram. Anyone who went for Hajj or Umrah will understand that before entering, you have to tie a haram. There are animals in that haram you cannot hunt. There are birds in that haram you cannot cut, catch. Whatever entered in that haram became sanctified. But Karitayyab sahab rahimullah explained it so beautifully. He said that this waterfall that fell, it was a waterfall of the beauty of Almighty Allah. Because of which the land of Makkah Mukarrama became the land of a lover and a beloved. A land where love will always be tested. A land in which nazar will not be allowed to fall on anything but the beloved. He said the demands of this tajalli, this waterfall of beauty became such that the land of Makkah Mukarrama could have nothing else of beauty. It would be nothing but mountain. There would be nothing growing there. In today's time, how many hotels have come up? But anyone who has visited the land will say, that the hotels of Makkah Mukarrama, no matter how beautiful, no matter how smart, within a few years you see they start losing their appeal. 
They start losing that beauty. They have to be brought down. Another one has to be brought up. They might call it five star, but it hasn't got that five star. The land of Makkah Mukarramah. In the past when there was no airports, it was never an accommodating land. It was always a difficult journey. Because in a land where a lover is journeying to his beloved, love is tested. Allah Tabarukallah made this land such that the love of the seeker will be tested on every part of the journey. You land at the airport of Jeddah, you just think that the flight was very tiring. In Jeddah you will have to stand in a line. They will want you to fill in forms, but there's never the form, there's never the pen. When you will land right by the counter, you will see the man going for tea. So hard this land has been made as though someone is pushing man away, don't come, don't come. As soon as you go through all of that, and you reach your hotel, you will find your hotel, your room is in such a zone, in such a business venue, in such a mall, that normally if you had to enter that mall, you would spend six or seven hours, you won't come out of that mall. As though in that mall there's an attraction, don't go to the Kaaba, don't go. Before reaching Makkah, it was a push, don't come, don't come. Now when you reach there, there's a pull towards you, don't go, don't go. So much of effort is being made to prevent man walking towards the Kaaba. Then there was the law, if you want to visit the Kaaba, you'll have to put on ihram. A man has his different ihram, a woman got her law. For both of them, they find it impractical, they find it difficult. They have to watch their every move. They have to worry the ihram must not fall. The woman has to worry the thing must not hit the face. So much of difficulty. But that person who understands the beauty of this land will realize that the difficulty that a lover takes on behalf of meeting the beloved, that difficulty does not go unnoticed. A person might sit in the taxi, the driver might say something to him, but in that journey of love you will even smile at that moment. When a boy has to come see a girl, it is the only time in his life perhaps he smiles at his future father-in-law so much. On that day if that father-in-law shows an attitude, the boy will not worry about that attitude. Because his inside will say, I never come to marry this man. I came to marry the beauty which is beyond this man. If that father-in-law as a test puts on a very rude attitude to test the tahammul and the sabr and the truthfulness of the boy, and if the boy has been told beforehand that let not the ugly face of the father put you off, Behind him there is a very, very beautiful, unique girl. When that boy reaches the door, he is ready for it. As that father opens the door and says, what you want, he smiles. That smile is because he was prepared to undergo difficulty, understanding that the difficulty is not unnoticed. A person who really makes a journey of Hajj or Umrah, if from beforehand he understands, that every difficulty on the journey is a test of the love of the seeker for the beloved. He will go through the entire thing smiling. There will be no argument, there will be no fight, there will be no irritation. Every difficulty will be a thrill in the path of love. When he will reach the Kaabatullah, whether man has heard it before or not, the whole world has felt something around the Kaaba. The whole world has said that I was in Ihram for so many hours. The journey towards it was so long. The time to reach the hotel took so long. Downstairs in the foyer they couldn't find my booking. It took so long to get in the room. I was so tired, so tired. I went in, I took a quick shower. Then someone said, we're going to make tawaf now, Umrah. So tired, so tired. But just like when a boy gets married, so much is done, so much is done, so much is done. Finally, when everyone goes, he says to his mother, Mommy, I'm so tired, so tired. And then he enters the room of his new bride. In one second, he forgets all his tiredness. Unique that land of the Kaaba is. That person so tired, so tired, 
Sometimes we say to him, sleep for a while, go make your umrah tomorrow morning. But he signs a certain power comes within him. And he just goes now towards the haram. On the journey to the haram, he sees so many shops on his side, he becomes blind from the shops. There is an attraction falling on the Kaaba. Mubarak to the man who can feel it even more. Otherwise the whole world feels so much. He is pulled to the Kaaba. As soon as he reaches the Kaaba, he looks at it. The person with the hardest of hearts. Some non-Muslims entered the land of Makkah Mukarrama. They had to put on the ihram so no one would know. They explained the reason of accepting Islam. The woman writes, when we reached in front of the Kaaba, I was silenced, my husband was silenced. I looked on his face, tears was coming from his eyes, tears was coming from my eyes. I asked him, what is it? He said, I don't know, do you feel it? They could feel such power although they had no iman. It is impossible that a believer must not be able to feel that power. That power that is falling makes a man go around the Kaaba, round and round, round and round. As he's going around, one person is pushing him, but it makes no difference, I have to finish my circuit. He's making dua, he's reading his kalimas, whatever he's doing, he knows he still has to make safa, marwa. But there is so much of power there, so much of power. The next morning, the umrah is done, you're out of your ihram. Normally in this world they'll say to you, now take a rest. You went through such a journey. The next day after breakfast the person is saying, when are we going to go make the off again? Somebody else is saying, when can we make another umrah again? This is the miracle of the Kaaba and the power that it gives. As that person is going around the Kaaba, going around the Kaaba, it is falling. The only thing is, if your heart is connected, a radio which connects to the right signal will get a clear signal. If the radio is off, the sound is in the air but it gets nothing. It must not happen, our hearts lose connection. That person who has lost it, who is far away, go back again for Umrah. Find that connection, find that feeling. People whose hearts have been hard, 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 when they looked at the Kaaba, they found the connection. Then when you come back, keep up that connection. As you are going around the Kaaba, it is falling. What's falling? The divine beauty of Almighty Allah has used the Kaaba to reflect the beauty of Allah. As it splashes on the Kaaba, think of the Kaaba. If someone has to say to you how beautiful it is, you'll say the most beautiful in the world. Then they will ask you what is the beauty of the Kaaba. You will have no answer. You cannot say it's the bricks of the Kaaba. Because the Kaaba was beautiful even with other bricks. You cannot say it's the covering of the Kaaba. Because there was a time when that covering was not there, it still had its beauty. There are times when the cover is lifted, man is still looking at it. It can't be the picture itself because man took a picture. He brought the picture in his house. People looked at it and said, what a wonderful picture and finished. The beauty of the Kaaba was not anything that was physical. It was some invisible beauty that was falling. But with such clarity it was falling that the eye which normally cannot see that which is invisible, the eye was able to pick up the beauty falling on the Kaaba. As man makes tawaf around the Kaaba, that beauty now splashes. As it splashes on the one making tawaf, on the one looking, on the one performing salah towards it, Allah Tabarukullah now introduces himself to the beloved that came looking for the beloved. It falls in the heart of the individual, it fills up in his body, it enters in his eye, it enters in everything of him. It makes him understand that there is nothing like Allah. That if this is just a reflection, if just this is just a reflection on a house which has made you go wild, which has made you go mad, which has made you spend 60 to 70 thousand and you will spend it again, and you will spend it again. If this is just a reflection, then what is Allah? This is the first introduction that man gets with his Allah. He feels it, it enters him. May Allah Tawarukala take us in front of that house. Whoever has come there the day he is leaving, he feels that what did I do around the Kaaba? 
You could have been said to him, you already made tawaf so many times, the heart will say, I want to make again. As soon as he enters his aeroplane coming back home, he's like that bird who wishes, I wish I can go back. This is the beauty of the Kaaba. Allah Tawarukala established a second tajalli. It is known as the tajalli, the waterfall that fell on the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Throughout the beginning years of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there were times when his chest was opened, when his heart was taken out, when his heart was washed. When that heart Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received Quran, ala qalbika, a very heavy Quran which Allah tabarakallah mentioned, had we sent it on a mountain, that mountain would have been brought into pieces. That heart was made so solid, so solid, it was going to receive unique tajalli. It was going to receive Quran. It was going to receive unique akhlaq, character. Allah Tabarukullah would mention, you have been blessed with the highest and the noblest of character. That character fell on that heart. It was going to receive unique awe. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I have been blessed with such an awe that from a journey of a month, the enemy starts shivering already. It was going to be blessed with the unique level of what is known as salawat. Unique peace, unique special grace. In Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi means that Almighty Allah and the angels have all turned their attention towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That attention has created a waterfall falling on the path of the beloved messenger of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As that tajalli fell and it continues falling, it created examples to teach me and you what it can still do. The examples it's created is called Sahaba. Every Sahabi became a Sahabi. Not because he was before the meeting. He became a Sahabi on the meeting. A Sahabi became an Umar. A man who could rule the whole world. He himself would say when I was young, my father would say to me, you cannot even look after the goats. Umar radiallahu an became Umar when he sat in front of that waterfall. His heart opened up. The splashes that were falling on Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa fell over him and he became a leader that history had never known. Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu an sat in front. He says, I brought water to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as khidmat. He hugged me. He made one dua, O oh Allah, bless him with knowledge. Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anh became the ocean of knowledge. Whatever question was put in front of him, his heart opened up. Libraries and libraries entered within him. Khalid bin Walid was a warrior, but he was not a conqueror of the world. The Arabs were under the Persians, under the Romans. He met with Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at him and said, Sword of the swords of Allah. Suddenly, wherever he went, he went through the armies. The enemy would say, we have heard that a sword has come from the heavens. It has reached your hands. Whoever you will unleash the sword upon, that person has been faced with the wrath of Almighty. Khalid radiallahu anh said, nothing like that. No sword has come to me from the heavens. He says, rather, my Nabi said, you are the sword of Allah. He said, after that statement, wherever I went in war, the battlefield just fell in front of me. But why am I mentioning this for me and you? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then mentioned, whoever will visit me after my passing away, he must understand as though he has visited me while I'm alive. We cannot make ourselves sahaba, but we can make ourselves like sahaba. That person who comes in front of the rover, why does he come? Why is he come to present his salah? But that he could have sent it from you also. The angels were made to take it. There was a reason why he was told, come to Medina Munawwara. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew the journey is hard. He knew the journey is difficult. In today's time with a car, it takes four to five hours. In the past when caravans would go, some of them would get robbed along the way. It would take days. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa was so merciful, still he said, Man sabara ala la'wa il madina, whoever will make sabar on the difficulties of the journey towards Medina Munawwara, 
كنت له شفيعا او شهيدا يوم القيامه on the day of qiyama i will speak in his favor why did he want us to come it wasn't that something to give my salat to him it was to receive when a father wants to distribute his wealth in his life he makes a phone call to his sons and then he says to them you make sure everyone is here on the sunday no matter what work you got cancel it you come the one says daddy it's very difficult someone in the family is sick he says see to the sick person but make sure you get here on sunday because i am going to be distributing rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said inna ma ana al qasim i am the distributor allah is the one that giving that person who lands up in front of that roba that salat that he says is a very short salat while standing in front of the roda the akabir would make a very short salat later on anywhere else in the masjid they would sit then they would engage in a lot of salawat but right in front it would be very short that short salat was just to say oh allah's nabi i have come that's it it was to press the on button once that button goes on that man can sit anywhere in the masjid after that and he can allow his heart to connect with the heart of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam through that connection the qualities which fall upon rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam up to today it made one person the ocean of knowledge it can make you your son your son your daughter it can make you all the ocean of knowledge it made someone like umar it has created umar right until today but the greatest that is falling is what is known as a tajalli of unique contentment and peace rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was that individual that he saw the hardest of difficulties that anyone in the world had ever experienced nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam would say i have been tested the like that none before me have ever been tested no nabi had been t- given that difficulty which fell upon the delicate nature of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yet he was a individual who remained smiling throughout his life a level of contentment and peace of heart that the oceans of the world could not make that smile change into a frown throughout his life he saw the death of his wife khadija radhiyallahu anha he saw the death of abu talib then he saw the death of his son in infancy each one would pass away then he saw the death of his daughters finally when he passed away it was only fatima radhiyallahu anha alive if someone looks at the history of rasulullah sallallahu's life he will see just by death alone every few years someone is passing away he had such a connection with the sahaba each one's death would cause a pain in his heart he had such a connection with the world anyone passing away without iman would cause a pain in his heart he had a worry for the people coming till qiyama that worry would make his legs swell 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 so much of worry so much of worry with all that worry falling on his heart he was able to give smiles to the world until his death remain smiling in his grave he remain smiling throughout that level of contentment which allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam is being blessed with it is a blessing that me and you would love the whole world is searching for what they call peace of mind contentment that frown must go away that depression must go away that tension must go away wallah the man who makes the journey to madina munawwara rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ibrahim alaihi salam made dua for makka i said oh wallah i am also your friend and your rasul he was your friend and your rasul i make dua for madina munawwara that oh wallah you grant it double the barakat that you have given to makka mukarrama that man who enters madina munawwara he finds that peace he finds that peace in the driver he finds that peace in the people in the hotel if he can sit and he can allow his heart to connect thereafter when the person comes back from umrah he will remain connected to the kaaba every time he says allahu akbar he will find the connection when he will engage in salawat on the nabi it will not just be a lap moving with sallallahu alayka ya rasulullah from fa you will be saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allahumma salli ala muhammad it will not just be a heart that tongue that will be moving he will understand that tongue is only the button to press on 
Once that on starts, the connection has started. My one salah is going. My Nabi is receiving. He is taking my name, taking the name of my father. He is giving a dua back. That thing is continuing. As that tajalli is falling on him, I am the distributor here. Said he is distributing. Even if the man is sitting in azarval, the woman is sitting in azarval, that peace and contentment which he made the journey for Umrah to get, once that connection has started, you can get it right now where you are sitting. You close your eye, you just say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, and you will find as it falls on the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the distribution is taking place. If my heart opens, then I am also signed as a person who must receive some goods. It comes, it comes in abundance, it comes in lot. Sahaba radiallahu anh, when they heard what man will get, a Sahabi radiallahu anh, said, I will read so much salah on you, so much salah on you, so much salah on you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained to him, then every worry of yours will be removed, every need of yours will be covered. He said, then I will do more. He said, and Allah can, will do even more. No matter how much you give, you will be getting even more. No matter how much you read, more will come to you. Two Mubarak lands. One is Makkah Mukarrama. One is Medina Munawwara. Then is the land of Masjid Al-Aqsa. Time is almost up. Very fast you will go through it. Sulaiman alayhi salatu wa salam built Masjid Al-Aqsa in a unique manner. It was the most unique building in its time in the world in the aspect of physical beauty. The minaret itself of it was going up 12 miles. At that time, Sulaiman alayhi salam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi would explain, made a dua. He says, Allah tabarukala gave him the first two of his duas. The third dua that he made, he made, Oh Allah, whoever will come to this masjid of mine, intending nothing in this masjid but to perform salaya. <laughs> oh Allah, forgive all of his sins. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, I have hope that Allah has accepted the dua. The man who went to Makkah Mukarramah got the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Oh Allah, incline their heart and you give them the fruits of this journey. The one who went to Medina Munawwara got the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The one who visits Masjid al-Aqsa gets the dua of Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasallam. But unique people in the past also visited Masjid al-Aqsa. But Masjid al-Aqsa for many, many years, for many centuries, was not only the masjid, but it was a capital. People who would come there would find a beautiful land. They would have meetings with the leaders. We today found an era, which is one of the few times in the history of man, where a person who is going to Masjid al-Aqsa, if you ask him, why are you going? He will say, there is nothing there in Aqsa. I am only going to perform salah. There is nothing else. When Sulaiman Ali Salam made that dua, he said, whoever will come here intending nothing but salah, people in the past who went there to keep their intention clean, today the man visiting doesn't have to keep his intention clean. There is no other reason of going. At the border of Jordan they will hassle you. At the Israeli airport they will hassle you. That journey is a hard journey. Man is scared, will I get through or not? And then someone says to him, what is there? What is there? There is a divine tajalli of the unique greatness of Almighty Allah that falls on Al-Aqsa also. And the person who has visited it, he will explain that you will find it an untouched power. He says, I have gone to Al-Aqsa and after going every year my heart desires I must go back to Masjid Al-Aqsa. There is no time to really explain what you are supposed to feel there. But I mentioned what you will feel by the Kaaba. I mentioned what you will feel by Masjid al-Nabawi. In Aqsa, go there, it is something to taste yourself. But so much I can say to you, that that person who will go, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned a few virtues for that individual. He mentioned the person who will tie his ihram. For either Hajj or Umrah from Masjid al Aqsa. Virtue number one that he will get is Allah will make him like a child who has just been born again. Normally, this virtue has been written for the one who got an accepted Hajj. Everyone cannot make that accepted Hajj, or everyone cannot make continuous Hajj. But the same virtue was written for a person 
هو التاي از احرام فور عمره فروم الاقصى such a unique journey it will be he will see al aqsa and he will enjoy the waterfall of al aqsa he will go for umrah makkah mukarrama he will enjoy the waterfall of makkah he will go to madina munawwara he will enjoy the waterfall of madina it is impossible that that person can become like a child after that the second fadilah that was given to him which is one that we all were striving for in today's time rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said The one who will put on a ihram, either for hajj or umrah from Masjid al-Aqsa, غفر له ما تقدم من ذمي. Whatever of the past has passed, his errors, his mistakes, Allah has made maaf. In the next word comes, وما تأخر. What's coming in the future has also been made maaf. This is a virtue the people strive for. It is mentioned in many amal. This is one place. Many parents, many people. They always say we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen around the corner. I don't know what will happen with my child. But I put my child in the school or must I do homeschooling? The one says I did this, I failed. The other one says I did that, I failed. Every person is asking what's the manner for tarbiyat? Forget the child, we don't know about ourselves. The man who had an imama yesterday, the imama came out. The man who was in the masjid yesterday is found in the club today. The world is moving so fast, people are rolling. Ulama has mentioned one meaning of wa ma ta'akhara, that the errors of the future have been forgiven. Mufti Muhammad Shafi'i sahab rahimullah mentioned, Almighty Allah will create a barrier around him that will prevent him making such errors which do not allow forgiveness to come to him. Unique barriers will be put up. The man feels I want to go to the club. The woman feels I want to send a message. Suddenly the heart just gets disinclined. That's something the whole world is looking for. That when I'm going towards that evil, oh Allah, stop it. Because if I hit that stumbling block and I fall flat, وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ His future has also been. Visit Masjid Al-Aqsa. This is a unique land. May Allah Tabarukala bless us all. Three lands. Makkah Mukarrama, you visit it, connect your heart. And as we mentioned, if you can't make the journey, or make the journey connected now when you're at home, every time you say, Allahu Akbar, you must feel the connection. Medina Munawwara, connect with the heart of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whenever you will make salawat, in salawat ulama I have mentioned, man can get every treasure of the world. Peace and contentment is the first thing people find when they make salawat on an Nabi. Knowledge people have gained. Hazrat Shah Waliullah Rahimullah wrote one kitab. Someone said to him, where did you get this knowledge? He explained there are two ways to get knowledge from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said one is through Sanad. I got from my Ustad who got from his Ustad. I got from this book who got from this author who got from this author. He said one is through a unique chain and it's a very Mubarak chain. And he said a second manner of getting knowledge is directly from the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam without any chain. He says the servant gathered this knowledge which I put in this book through that. They were able to connect. Mujaddids were created when they were asked what put this thought in your heart. He said I went for Umrah. In front of the Rosa I stood and I cried. I said oh Allah what's the solution for the world? Suddenly when he came back he had a thought, he had a mission, he had a push that could not stop. They connected. The jadeed came because of that connection. Peace and contentment came because of that connection. Knowledge came because character came. People who got faulty character, they want to correct their character, go in front of their rosa and just cry. Just cry and open your heart and say, Oh Allah, the character that is falling, Oh Allah, allow the transfer to take place within me. People's character was made after they visited. As for Masjid Al-Aqsa, visit that land. Hazrat Maimuna radiallahu anha then asked, O oh Allah's Nabi, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ye tu hu go, sallu fihi, perform salah in it. He said, one salah in it will be like a thousand anywhere else. But then she asked that unique question, that what if a person cannot go? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then said, then send something to Al-Aqsa. He said, even if you send something small, Aqsa was the land of the olive. 
So olive oil is not something Aqsa needed in that time. Today it needs. But in that time it never needed. Something so small, so trivial, even olive oil. He said, send some of that oil. Then they can just use it to burn the lanterns. He said, man fa'ala, the one who will do even so little, he will be recorded as the one who visited Al-Aqsa. Such a small amount. Today we can connect with Masjid Al-Aqsa in two ways or three ways. One is try to visit that land. Make an intention and may Allah Taala take us all. Number two is whenever we can send money to help the cause of Al-Aqsa. In no matter how little it is, that oil which never meant anything to Al-Aqsa because it had oil would record the man as though he came to visit me. Some money that is sent today can be little, but in the eyes of Al-Aqsa it's lot. And the third, which is most important, is keep our connection with Al-Aqsa with dua. There must be a lot of dua for Al-Aqsa, for the freedom of Al-Aqsa. Makkah Mukarrama and Medina Munawwara will never enter into the hands of the enemy. Al-Aqsa is in the hand. But within the next few years, Allah Tabarakala, inshaAllah, is going to bring the time that Aqsa will come out. In the history of Al-Aqsa, it has never stayed in the hands of the enemy more than a hundred years. Aqsa will come out from the enemy. But Mubarak to that individual who can have his name written in the records of Al-Aqsa, that during the days when it was difficult to visit me, this man made this journey. At a time when the world forgot me, this man remembered me. Al-Aqsa will become the capital of the world again. Everyone will connect at that time. Mubarak to the individual who connects today. May Allah tabarakallah let us enjoy. I spoke of the four gifts that Allah has given us. One is Baytullah the Kaaba. One is Kalamullah the Quran. One is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one is Masjid al-Aqsa. From these four, power, four power sources, let us derive power. Let us gather power. Let us feel that power. Let us enjoy that power. May Allah tabarakallah grant us all.